So hey guys, welcome to uh, Property Rant. So today I've um, got the privilege of here being here with um, Jim Kirby. So Jim's been one of our clients since about 2005. Um, five or six. Five or six, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, you know, so what's that? 14, 15, 15 years, 16 years potentially. No, 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. 15 yeah. years. Um, so you know, the great thing about that is Jim's been you know in a job all the way through. He's built a portfolio. He's now retired. Um, successfully retired and, uh, and looking very good. Um, it's, it's very good for it. No, but um, so we're sort of caught up and I thought it'd be really good to get down and dirty with the whole process that you've actually been through because um, you know, so many people are starting out and they haven't actually seen the end results. You know? And I think it's one of the problems we have in this industry is you've got all these property gurus running around and, and you know, talking about becoming a millionaire and how easy it is and how simple it is and how quickly you can do it. And for the most part, it's absolute BS. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think um, what you're in gym and, and a number of our clients now is they've done it for 15 years, 10 years, mm-hmm. you know, and so they've actually been to the point where they got to the retire, you mm-hmm. know. Um, so I guess, what, what, how did you start out? What was your sort of thinking? I mean, if you can remember back that far, um, you know. Well, yeah. um, for the last 25 years until very recently, I was practicing as a criminal defense barrister. Um, it, it's not as well paid as some branches of law, but it is well paid, or at least it was in those days. And I had a good income, and I was managing to keep some savings going. And the obvious thought occurred to me that um, I only had a good income whilst I was working. And I'd reached a stage in my life when I would want to stop working, whether I was 45, 55, or 65, and then I would have no income. So what I needed was to acquire assets that would give me uh, an income and a good income at that stage in my life. And I was fortunate enough to meet Brett and his team in London, um, in 2005 or thereabouts, and I bought my first property with them. And they introduced me to the concept of buy to let. I mean, I knew what that was, and I, I'd, I'd been a tenant myself for years, renting property, and then me and my wife had finally bought our own properties and moved on and moved up the property ladder. And the time came to acquire the first of our properties that we were going to own for the purposes of letting and gaining a, gaining a landlord's income. And that was... Was that a First Central or was that an Argon Tower? I can't remember if it was one. It was one of the two. It was, it was either one. in East London or West London. Yeah. And they were beautiful apartments, two-bedroom apartments. Mm. And uh, as I said, we, we bought a number of properties yeah. before, my wife and I. And these beautiful apartments had come and Brett and his team had done due, due diligence on them. They looked at the position, the schools, the desirability of the properties, the local facilities, the transport links and so on. It was very impressive. Yeah. And the time came to buy. Mm. My wife was nervous, um, I, admittedly. I was a little less nervous, but I was a bit apprehensive. And the great thing was, you and your team made buying, actually acquiring the property, really easy. I could see that it made financial sense, but they did, obviously, sourcing the property, getting it at a very competitive price, arranging a mortgage, doing the searches with their solicitors, Um, and doing all the legal completions. Now, I'd done that before for myself, one property at a time, but they were doing it with 10 properties at a time, and they had people who really knew what they were doing. You know what the really great thing was, both then and going forward, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have the stress. I could concentrate on my day job and keep the income from that coming, and you guys did all the work. So I owned my first property. Yes! (laughs) And which is, so, I mean, obviously we talk about effortless property investment and often effortless property management. Has it, would you say it's been effortless or has there been, still, there's still been ups and downs, haven't there, along the way? Yeah, there have been ups and downs. Um, but the fact that you did the homework and the research on the properties, for all of us, buying a home and even buying an investment is to some extent a leap in the dark. We can do all the research we want, but you guys did the research and it proved to be well-founded research. Um, and we bought the first, and then maybe a year later we bought our second yeah. on the other side of London, and they were still our best investments, actually. Yeah. They were really good. Yeah, well, that's right. And Excellent. then, what is more important, even without these guys, buying a property is relatively straightforward. Well, it's, it's actually never straightforward, it's always a heartbreak. Yeah. Um, and it's never, it never does it on time, and they're always, oh, they've come up with this now, they've come up with that now and you're tearing your hair out. Obviously it was successful in my case. Um, But the important thing is, 
managing the tenancies and collecting the rent and doing the maintenance and all that crack thereafter, you guys did. Yeah. I didn't have to do anything. I sat at home and the checks came in every month. Yeah. And yes, there's always maintenance. Um, you send me an email saying there's an issue with the washing machine in this flat. So you organise an engineer, you send it along and say it's a repair or it's a replacement. So fine, do it. And you do it. Yeah. The honest reality is most of my tenants I've never met. Mm. I have properties I've never seen. Because I don't have to see them. I don't have to go there. I provided the capital for the investment. Yeah. And you made the investment. Yeah. And you screened the clients. You found the tenants. You did the credit checks. Um, you collected the rent. Uh, if there were ever arrears, you chased the arrears and you did the maintenance. Yeah. And it really has been effortless. Mm. I'm, I'm incredibly grateful. And so uh, one of the interesting things with Jim too is it, so Jim started off um, as a barrister and then you realised you identified with the cuts and all the things that you could see where yes. it was heading. So you decided yes. to jump careers effectively. To a yes. Ten years, away, uh, ten years ago, I stepped away from full-time practice uh, at the bar because I was offered a job teaching at a university and... It was a lifestyle choice, um, again, which, is, which parallels what Brett had first explained to me when I met him about um, buying to let. It's a lifestyle choice. And I left the pressure of a full-time legal practice and I moved to the south coast of England and I taught law at a university. And in doing so, I cut my stress by 80%. I cut my income by about 60, 70 percent. Uh, I cut my travelling time by 90 percent. And my lifestyle and my health improved immeasurably. And my portfolio continued to gently, steadily grow. Nothing too ambitious, nurtured no. by Brett and his team. And now I have an income in the thousands of pounds per month, far more than I ever got as a salary. And, um, well, I worked hard to get the money, but now the money's working hard for me. Yeah. And I think that's really important too. It's, you know, you don't have to have hundreds of properties to be successful and to have a good income. Actually, yeah. you know, you can have, I mean, I talk about three plus one plan, but the reality is, you know, depending on the lifestyle you want and that, it's actually, and given the time, because actually some of the properties you bought too up north, mm -hmm. they haven't really done a lot. I mean, income wise, okay, they might have made a bit of money, but yeah. they didn't really do a lot in the end. And the decision yeah. was taken that actually they weren't in areas that were getting invested in and, and the unfortunate thing is, and as you've probably heard me say, you know, most areas in the UK are not getting any attention. Mm. And so we're not selling properties in those areas anymore. And, and so we got rid of some of those. Yes, I mean, I bought those um, maybe 12 years ago. Yeah. And in terms of capital growth, they've gained a little bit, but not much. They paid for themselves during that period. Um, and I managed to get a bit of profit on the, on the, on the rental income as opposed to the mortgage costs. But I looked at the state of England now and the enormous capital growth I've made on the properties both in East London mm. and in West London uh, and down in Surrey or Middlesex, yeah. they're doing very well. But the ones in Yorkshire simply weren't going anywhere, so we sold them, that's fine. And um, what I intend to do, I still got a mortgage on two, two of them have a mortgage. And they're coming up for uh, renewal in about 18 months. What I intend to do is sell one in Docklands and the capital growth on that has been extraordinary because of the part of London that it's in. Yeah. And that will give me almost enough money to pay off not only that, but the one in West London as well. And I have a few more savings. I'll pay off the one in West London entirely. So that will be mortgage free as well as the others in, yeah. in the south of England. And, and interesting, just on that one, you know, in some ways you could sell either one. Yeah, I could sell but either in one. some ways the reason we're choosing that one to keep is because actually when we first bought that one, it was regeneration area and yeah, I was spending a lot yeah, of money in. Yeah. And it was, you know, um, and now actually, funnily enough, I've just started talking about that area again, yeah. you know, 15 years later, you yeah. know, that actually there's now another tranche of money coming into to build it, which will drive prices up again. It's an amazing part of West London. Mm -hmm. There's so much regeneration there. Crossrail has made a real difference. Yeah. People are pouring in, investment is pouring yeah. in, and property values and rental values are going up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, it does come back around. And, and that's how a proper functioning market should work. The mm. problem is because of political decisions and because of you know, all sorts of economic things and whether we say Brexit or whatever, uh, recessions, um, a lot of places in the UK aren't getting that investment and therefore the fundamentals are actually 
getting worse. Yeah. So you need to you know look at getting rid of those properties, um, and that, that that's a challenge. I mean, you know, because for some people um, who may have bought five years ago, or, you know, they haven't seen growth enough growth, um, that can be very difficult. So it, it really is part of the strategy, and, and obviously we used to meet quite regularly about mm-hmm. strategy and. I mean, you know, it was always over lunch and a few uh, wines, you know. <laughs> but the reality was that what we do is strategize what we were doing. And we talk about, you know, the fact mm. that, hey, do we keep this one? Do we get rid of it? Do you, you know, go get a job down as in, you know, with a less wage, you know, mm. a, you know, but a better lifestyle and a blah, blah, blah mm. and all that. Do you keep being a barrister and, you know, mm. and, and ride the wave straight down, you know, mm. which, you know, um, and, and I think it's, it's been interesting to see, you know, from go to woe, and you know, for over the last fifteen years, mm. I mean, it's been fantastic, and it really, you know, there's ups and downs, and that, as mm. there is in anything, and it's not going to be a case of, you know, it's not this every property makes you huge amounts of money, mm. yeah, um, you know, some of them tick over, and some of them do just wild, beyond your wildest dreams, and I think that's, you know, really that's where London, um, the fundamentals in London are so fantastic. That's yeah, why what, I love it. what I'm what I'm satisfied with still yeah. is that. You guys do so much research. You know the market so well. I don't. It isn't my job. Yeah. I don't know where the investment's going. And you're now concentrating again. Brexit's done, whether or it will be done, whether yeah, we yeah, like it or not. Yeah, yeah. And the knock-on effect of it, actually some certainty arriving now in the financial and the political arenas is really important. Yeah. And so money is being invested again. It won't be crazy, but it will be good growth again. But I don't know whether you should invest in London or mm. Leeds or Manchester or Birmingham or in Guildford or these other places. I don't know. But he does. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I, and, and I mean, to be fair, that's, that's what we do all day, every day, basically, mm. that's, mm. you know, is, is researching. And it's not just me researching, it's using all of our network that we've developed mm. you know, over the past 20 years or 18 mm. years, I think it is, I've been in the UK property market, um, that the relationships that are built for people who work in the Manchester, London, mm. you know, and the various markets that we mm. go into and those relationships because actually they're the guys that really know the stuff locally and mm. we get in and, and bring that, bring our negotiation of power and our yeah. history and mm. all that to bear mm. to get the best deals in the best areas. You know, and, and a lot of times actually I think the mistake that we make as property people is we try and get the best price but in some ways I would rather get a you know, market value mm. in a market that's going to go up yeah. Than to get a huge discount in a crappy area, you yeah. know? and I think yeah. that now, you know, that's the, been the game that's been played in the, the, the industry for a long time, and it, it just doesn't work. You know? But you, because people aren't playing the long game, no. and I'm an example of the long game in action as a client, yeah. because I, when we first met, I was at the top of my career. I was earning a, a significant amount of money, yeah. and I was working hard, yeah. and then I can't remember five years into that. I stepped off the carousel and I took, a, as I said, a lifestyle decision, a much calmer job, much less work, much less stress, and now I've gone down another notch mm. where I'm just doing the very occasional case in the courts, but I'm more or less retired. And, but I'm still enjoying the fruits now. In fact, I'm enjoying the fruits now more than ever yeah. of this connection and this investment. Yeah, and yeah absolutely. I'm grateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, it's, it's been fantastic having that relationship with you too. <laughs> We've had many, uh, many a laugh. If you don't know Jim, he is, he is quite the character. And you can imagine him as a barrister in front of a judge. It would be theatrics. Members of the jury, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> it is Thank a laugh you. minute with this guy, mate. Hey, I, just before you go too, one, one other thing I just wanted to talk about too was just from the lettings perspective, so the relationship with the property manager that you have. Yes. So who's your property manager? Philippa. Philippa, okay. Yeah. So, so Philippa's, um, you work with Philippa. Mm. How have you found that relationship? Really good, really good. They're so, they've got a really good focus team. Yep. They have one point of contact for me, yep. which is great. And I don't need to know who's in maintenance, who's in leases, who's in legal, who's yep. in whatever. Yep. Um, I have one point of contact, and I go to her if there's ever an issue, and there isn't usually, but it's great because their responsiveness, they're really good. They respond. There was an instance where I had some maintenance done and I thought they'd overcharge me. Um, I said, this isn't really a good rate. And they investigated, they came back, they spoke to the contractor, the, contract, the contractor gave me an appropriate refund. Um, and it was really good. So I feel taken care of. Um, there isn't, I don't have to do much. They have it running very smoothly for me and it's great. I'm very grateful. And I think now, more than ever, 
you know, there's over 170 pieces of legislation that we have to cover. I mean, I'm, I've gone back to school basically and doing my level four certificate in property mm -hmm. management because I have to, because the new regulations that are coming out all the way to Dredd mm -hmm. is I have to be uh, qualified and mm -hmm. all of my team are qualified. And we've actually been committed to that for a number of years where all of our team, we pay for their qualifications to be done, which is very rare in the industry mm. um, right now. It'll become the standard, but we've always wanted to have highly skilled people who knew what they were doing. Partially, partially because I don't want to be the bottleneck where I have to make all the decisions, yeah. but I want to devolve that down. And I think that's one of the key things. With so, so let me interrupt. There's an irony here or a paradox. I'm a lawyer. I'm a barrister. People think I know the law. I do, but like most barristers in one niche area, I passed my landlord exams 25 years ago. I've no idea how most of it went over my head. It's dreadful, landlord, don't go there. And I ring up and say, Philippa, Brett, what's the law on this? And they tell me, and I'm grateful. <laughs> and I don't, even, I don't even have to give them the kind of fees that I'm used to expect. It's great. Yeah. Oh, really? Maybe we need to renegotiate. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> No, no, that's awesome. But um, I think, look, mate, it's you know it's great having you as a client. I think really thank you for coming along today. And it's, 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 been a, it's been a great journey. Yeah. And I have this nest egg now, which is looking after me and my family, and I'm very pleased. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheers. Awesome. See you guys. Have a great day. Bye.